Hello there, this is going to be lecture two for structural drafting. It will mainly be just a look at structural plan reading. Uh, most everyone should be familiar with um, plan reading at this point. Uh, some of you I know have taken blueprint reading or plans and document interpretations, which uh, should have covered most of this. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we all understood what we were looking at before we got actually into the, the drawing of plans and sections and details and all these things. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of different sets briefly. Um, <clears throat> what this is that you're looking at is actually a foundation plan. Uh, and you can see down here at the bottom it says foundation plan. And this is from a prototype of a Fred's dollar store. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not site specific uh, depending on what kind of if you remember back through construction materials, depending on what kind of soil we have in the site and those sorts of things, um, how level it is, uh, how unlevel it may be, that's going to determine what type of foundations that we use and all that. So this is just a prototype, meaning a typical foundation. It may be altered. Uh, but I'm going to use it just to kind of show you some overall uh, things about structural plans that we need to know. Obviously here in the middle we have the plan itself, a lot of notes and dimensions, and we'll look at those. Over to the right side, we have a footing schedule and some general notes and a legend. We're going to look at those. One thing initially that you should notice, <coughs> excuse me, is that the plans themselves are very simple. Uh, there's not a lot of complexity to it in this particular one, and that's true with most structural plans. It's mainly just a lot of lines um, and notes and dimensions. There's not a lot of complexity to it other than the amount of those lines could change drastically. Um, so what we're going to start at, or start looking at first, is actually going to be the notes and the legends. Up here at the top we have a footing schedule, <clears throat> and we'll look at all this on the plan in a second. Uh, but we have the mark, in other words, how it's marked on the plan, what size each mark is. So if this is footing number 3, or footing 3.0, it is 3 foot wide by 3 foot deep by 12 inches high. Okay, what type of reinforcing does it have in it? it? Has three number five bars, and then of course if we have any comments, we can put them out there. But this is just a very basic, simple, typical uh, footing schedule and how it would be used. And it tells you what the allowable bearing pressure is. So all the concrete has to be a minimum of two thousand pounds per square foot. Okay. <clears throat> General notes. It's going to vary based on plans. This is a note talking about the slab, how thick it would be, what type of reinforcing it would have in it, um, what type of uh, what type of elevation, I'm sorry, the top of the slab would have, which they're always going to assume zero again because they don't know where this is going. So we're just starting with a zero. Uh, we don't really know how high that slab is going to be above sea level or anywhere else. Um, and then just a lot of other um, general notes. <clears throat> Um, if there's any kind of special markings, they will note that here. This particular mark indicates slab on grade control joint or construction joint. And if you remember right, um, a control joint is a small groove in the concrete that, missed, that is meant to control cracking. A construction joint, which is this, basically the same thing as an expansion joint, is where one slab pour may end and you end a particular chunk of the slab there and then you pick up with a brand new pour brand new slab right next to it but there's a joint in between them because they are actually part of the same slab the same floor so hopefully you remember that from construction materials uh, they reference architectural drawings um, general notes all fittings to be centered under walls columns piers and pilasters UNO is un unless noted otherwise <clears throat> so that's just a uh, abbreviation. That is not the number one in Spanish. That is unless noted otherwise. Um, just some typical notes that you might see are references to other sheets. This is C sheet S2 for typical CMU wall construction basically is what it's saying. Um, <clears throat> see detail 9 on S2 for reinforcement. This is what they're using for a CMU wall. Hopefully you remember what CMU is. If you don't, go look it up. Um, P1, what it denotes, if you see this, that is a 
uh, a footing step and see uh, detail 4s3 for that this is the type of slab you should have all around the perimeter unless otherwise um, at the dumpster pad <clears throat> and then this is telling us when we see the footing marks how to read them this is the actual footing mark okay it's 30 this is the maximum vertical downward column reaction you can just think of this is stuff the engineer comes up with you can think of this as amount of pressure on it from the top downward 7,000 pounds 7 kips <clears throat> a kip is a thousand pounds so 7,000 pounds upward maximum vertical upward reaction in other words lift would be 3,000 and they just list it as a negative because it's not meant to take pressure going upwards it's meant to take pressure a column is meant uh, or a footing in a column are meant to take pressure coming from the top down so when it's a bottom up uh, force it's going to be listed as a negative but it's 3,000 pounds and then the horizontal reaction in other words how much can it take side to side would be 3,000 as well uh, this <clears throat> is the top of the footing so if you have this it's telling you that the top of the footing is five feet below negative five feet below the top of the slab which is assumed to be zero feet so it's five feet deeper than the top of the slab but that's how you read those all right now on to the plans themselves we'll just kind of pick a corner and go with it down here you'll notice a few things <clears throat> One starts with the uh, dimensions. We'll actually start over here because uh, we'll be able to see this grid down here at the bottom fairly well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> tell you what, let's start all the way at the top so we can get the A's and the 1's together. Okay. First thing you'll notice is across the top and down the side we have this uh, grid or this matrix. And if you follow these lines, you'll see they intersect where these columns are. Okay, and again, hopefully from construction materials, <clears throat> you can remember that these little symbols right here represent a column, wide flange, metal shape, W shape. Um, <clears throat> and you'll see that these center lines, or these lines off of these grids, are going right to the center of this. <clears throat> this one happens to be going right to the edge, outside edge of this, the slab, okay? So a few things to note. This is the column itself, this W shape is what it looks like. These are going to the center of each column. This one's going to the center of a column, but it's actually a column that's further down. This one happens to be a tube steel column, okay? But all these are going to be to the center lines of wherever the column is that this is going to. <clears throat> and then around that, you'll see these dashed lines. Those are footings. It's just a big concrete uh, rectangle or square in this case that's underneath the column that the column is bearing on. And again, we just looked at this. This is footing number three. And if we look back over there, footing three is three foot wide, three foot deep, and then 12 inches thick. So this little square represents three wide, three deep, 12 inches top to bottom thickness. And it's going to be set in the ground in the column, of course, on top of that. So these dash lines here are the footings. Some people call them spot footings. Um, <clears throat> that's fine. Some people call it a pad. That's fine, too. Generally, they're going to be called spot footings because they only happen at certain spots where the columns need them. This really dark line is actually the edge of the slab, the outside edge of the concrete slab. This dotted line here is where the footing that you can't see because it's underneath the top of the slab is running all around the outside of the building. Okay, And it does, in most cases, it does intersect with these spot footings along the way. <clears throat> 